Okay, so let's review a little bit. And I am jumping ahead a tad <coughs> by having you create a site information. But I feel if we get that out of the way first, um, or at least once I get it out of the way, but handle whatever problems we have with that first, then it will avoid problems later on when you actually try to upload your pages. So <coughs> we worked on having, on getting you a tripod account. And there's three things that you need to always have available. You have to have your username. And that's whatever name that you gave to tripod for your, your URL. <coughs> um, you need the password and you need the FTP. For tripod, it's ftp.tripod.com. Okay. For other companies, you know, if you if yours is through Time Warner or if it's through, um, you know, your your cable company, if it's through your telephone company, I don't know what it is. I do know for mine with Earthlink, it's www.ftp.earthlink.net. And that's considerably different than just ftp.tripod.com. So, and it, it depends on the company. It is, <coughs> FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. <coughs> and it is that that allows you to transfer <coughs> your files at the local, at your local computer to this, their server and also take files from their server and transfer them to your local computer wherever that local computer may be. It doesn't necessarily have to be here. It can be at home. <coughs> so if you recall, probably one of the most important things for your website is to have what is called a root folder. And a root folder contains everything that goes on your website, and I mean everything whatever images that you plan on using on your website, whatever flash files, meaning the SWF files, it will have those. If you have movie files, .mov files, it will have your HTML pages, whatever goes on your website, whatever will, that will be transferred and uploaded, needs to be in this folder. So not only do you need the folder, you need to put it in a place and keep it there and don't move it around. So meaning don't, I don't mean, for example, mine's on my desktop. I wouldn't advise doing that, especially here because it will be gone when you log out and op you know, log back in again. Um, that's an important reason. At home, I guess it doesn't matter. <coughs> and I don't mean moving it over here to the left versus moving it here. I mean deciding later on, okay, I don't want it on the desktop anymore. I want to put it <coughs> inside some, you know, another folder someplace else. Because by doing that, you change the, the path to get to that folder. And, and um, Dreamweaver does a pretty good job of hunting it down to recognize that that path is broken and it needs to be fixed. But if it doesn't, then it results in all kinds of problems. The other thing that you should probably do is that you can have lots of folders in here, but you probably need at least one folder that's titled images. And make sure that images is lowercase in case that entire folder is uploaded to the server. Um, the rules for naming files and folders and whatever, what it, naming whatever it is that's going to go on your website is the same <coughs> or the same rules that we introduced the first week of class and we were saving images for the web. Okay, so they all, they you need to st start lowercase, no spaces between words. If you do use a space, use an underscore, um, no special characters, do not start naming a file with a numeral. It can end with a numeral. 
So if I had flash one, flash two, flash three, but don't say one, flash two, flash three, flash, that sort of thing. Don't use ampersands, don't use dollar signs, don't use any funny characters. And naming your files, it's very important. Because <coughs> um, oftentimes what will occur is you'll think everything is working fine because it, you can view it locally and then you attempt to upload it to the server and you'll look online, you'll put in your URL and hope to see it and it will be missing files because they weren't able to transfer. Okay. Now, to make sure that Dreamweaver is connected, let me put this away. To make sure that Dreamweaver is, has all the pertinent data for your site, and you can have multiple sites. You don't have to have just one. It's found under the site menu at the top here. And what we're going to do today, again, is to create a new site. And once you have existing sites, then you can select Manage Sites, and you'll see that I have two of them here. You could have dozens of them here. And each site has its own root folder. They do not share a root folder. Okay. So, for example, I'll go ahead and I'll click a new folder here, and I'll put, this will be Lauren Miller 2. Whoops. And inside the folder, I'll put a new folder, and I'll name it Images, just to be on the safe side, and close it. So I've created a root folder first. That You have to have that first before you can set up your site. Now we go back to Dreamweaver, go to Site, and select New Site. By default, it should be switched to Basic. I prefer looking at Advanced. Um, I, I guess I like um, most people are a creature is a, I'm a creature of habit, and this looks more familiar to me because when I started off with Dreamweaver and the other basic looks foreign to me. So we're going to start with the local information and the name of it does not have to match your root folder, but it's not a bad idea so that you know which one matches with which, especially if you have multiple sites that are similar to one another. So I'll name it. <coughs> uh -huh. Does that site name shows up any time? The site name shows up only at the top. It's not when I name it this way, I do it out of habit. It, the site name isn't critical, how you name it. Mm -hmm. It's just local. Oh. Um, but I do it out of habit, just s because there are, yeah. Okay. The next thing that we want to do underneath is to select the root folder. And if you look to the right, you'll see an icon of a folder. And when you click on it, it brings up this window that allows you to select whatever folder you want. So I'm going to go to my desktop, and I'll scroll down, and here is Lauren Miller, too. And I choose. And this is really critical. So that any time it loads a page that you have created, it goes to that folder to retrieve the, the files. It will also, it's smart in that it will detect if you are importing a file that is not in your root folder, you know, you want to place it into your HTML page, it will say, this file is not in, a, in your root folder. Do you wish to make a copy of it and place it in that copy in your root folder? Not a bad idea. So it is smart in that regard. And then it says default image folder. We've already created the folder, so I'm going to select images and choose. The next um, is we move down below and we need to put in the HTTP address. 
And again, it's always um, HTTP colon slash slash precedes the address. And if you are, if it is with a tri with tripod, this is how it works. And this is only with tripod. Okay. In this particular case, it's mine is your username. So the one that I created from my daughter was Lauren hyphen Miller. And it will be dot tripod. Whoops, can't spell pod dot com. So forget the www and that sort of thing. It's not a part of this. If you do want a www with your URL, we can talk about that after we set this up. We can go to GoDaddy. Anybody familiar with that? I'm sure most of you have seen GoDaddy ads. <coughs> no? Well, that would be a good place to go to buy a domain name. They're inexpensive. Um, they are registered. And what they provide or can provide for you with that purchase, a very minimal purchase. I'm kind of going off on a tangent now. Let me stop and come back. Um, anyway, we have the HTTP. That's all we need to fill out here. Now we go to remote info. And for right now, the only thing that we need to select where it says access none, select access FTP. The FTP host for, go, for tripod, as I said, is ftp.tripod.com. We do not need to put a host directory. Under login, you put your username. So again, this was Lauren hyphen Miller. You need to put your password. At home, I mean, it's nice that it automatically checks save the passwords. You don't have to put this stuff in again and again and again every time you load it. Unfortunately, here, because they have deep freeze loaded on the computer, um, it will reset every time you log out. So all of these settings will go away. At home, that will not be the case. You will want to save the password so that anytime you you open that particular site, you could just work on it. You don't have to think about this. The next thing that you need to do is check passive FTP. Why that is, I don't know. A student of mine told me once, and I don't remember. But it works better when you're transferring the files. If anybody knows, you get a yay for the day, maybe some net bonus points. And then we're done. And now when we look up at site and we select manage sites, you'll see that I created that new one, Lauren Miller 2. And for you, you should only have one. Whatever site you created should be here under manage sites. Is there anyone? I, I know the three of you who don't have an account aren't, I mean, you're not going to have one, but do the rest of you, were you successful? It's really important that this work. And it's not essential that it work today, right now, at this moment. But I, as I said, I want to handle this now because after we design a page or two or even a shell of a website, I want to make sure that you're able to upload it successfully. Something else we can do. One more thing before we switch. To save all of these settings so that you don't have to rely on your notes that may be on a napkin or rely on your memory, which at my age kind of comes and goes. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I have those middle aged mental moments where I feel I'm really in charge and then suddenly. What was that? I just, you know, fly by here. So, so what we want to do is we want to export, select your um, site, and export that information. I think a safe place to, to export it is to put it in your root folder. 
You can export it and leave it in multiple places if you want. It's kind of like leaving notes for yourself around the house. <laughs> <laughs> My keys are on the on a nightstand or something, you know. I'm not that bad yet. That's only because I'm paranoid and I always keep my keys on me. And like a chipmunk, I got my pockets are full of stuff, so I don't forget. Um anyway, it's the same thing. You can leave <coughs> copies of that wherever you want, but it leaves all of that information. It leaves the site name. It leaves the URL, it leaves your username, it leaves your password, it leaves all of that pertinent information intact so that when we come back in class and you're ready to upload and to work on your site or just work on your site, you would select import. So this is how this is going to work. I'm going to first export the information. This is okay. Now it I want to use it for backup settings. And I want to, to include login, password, and local paths. That's very important for me. On the other hand, <coughs> the, the second button down here is if you only want to share part of this with someone. Oftentimes in web design, it's not an individual who works on the site. It is a team of people. And if, if the login and the password or only to be known by a handful of people. Maybe you want them to share certain things, but you don't want them to share the login or the password. Does that make sense? Okay, that's all. For us, though, we want the first default one. And I click OK, and it asks me where I want to save it. So I'm going to go to the desktop. <coughs> sort of, there we go. And I go to, here's Lauren Miller, too. And I just click Save. And it, I'm done. It saves it as an STE file or site file. This is something that's only local. It's not something that's uploaded or anything. It's a, it, it's a Dreamweaver file. And now what I will do is I'm going to remove or delete this site because that's what's going to happen to you when you log out of the computer, go home, come back <coughs> here at school. Okay, So it's gone. I, when you remove that, it's totally gone. Why would you remove it? Because I want to show you now what you're going to do when you come back each day, how to import all that information back into it. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. No. Oh, thank you. Okay. Okay. As com organized as I think I am sometimes. Oh, well. Let me go ahead and open this one. So I'm going to edit this one. And when I go to Remote Info, <coughs> if you click on the Test button and you get the green light, you're good to go. If you do not get the green light, then that means it's something that you have put in here. Either the URL, the FTP, the username, or the password are incorrect. And remember that all of these things are case sensitive. So sometimes it's easy to type in the correct password but not realize that you have caps lock on and that makes it in it, it makes it unusable. So if I click here and it says connecting to Lauren Miller, that's a good sign that it is trying to connect. It says that it connected to the web server successfully. I'm in good shape. That's what you want to see. If you don't see that it won't work. So unfortunately, you have to try, 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 and do it again and again and again until you put it in exactly the way you had it. OK. You know, without even creating the site, meaning that pages or anything else, you know that you're connected to it now. <coughs> unfortunately, um, with web design, there are a lot of technical things that we have to take into consideration, and this is part of it. Because we're not working just locally. I mean, when you work with a Photoshop file, it's complete. You print it, you get a hard copy, you can make as many copies as you wish, you can hand it out to people, they have something physical to hold in their hand, and that's it, it's done. This is not that way. And that, especially for myself, I'm not 
an unorganized person, but I'm not the most organized person either, and it doesn't take much to slip up. You know, especially if you make a typo, or maybe you've set it aside for a few weeks and you come back to it. I mean, even my own website, you know, I don't, up, I don't update it on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, even on a monthly basis. So <coughs> I come back to it and I go, what did I do again? You know, you're trying to remember, and when you have, you know, I, using um, computer lingo, you know, when you have it in RAM, when you're working on it at the moment, you know, okay, I, and you're really focused on your project, you know, okay, I have this saved here, and I have this, this is what I have, these different versions named, and you're really focused and everything works, and then when the project is done, kaboom, it goes, you know, it's left, it's in, maybe it's in storage, maybe it was deleted, who knows. And then you come back to it weeks later, and you're scratching your head, and go, what? And it takes you a while to get back into it. So it's best if you do, if you are somewhat organized and develop a system for yourself so you can retrieve all of that information somewhat quickly without too much muss or fuss. Anyway, what I was going to do now is I was going to import this. And this is what you, each of you will have to do. They have given me different settings, so I don't, they don't, I don't have um, deep freeze on my computer so I can store and make a mess of my desktop. Um, but for all of you to clean things up and to restore it back to a default setting, um, it, it all goes away. So what you need to do each time you come in every morning is to click import. Go to your root folder or wherever you have saved, s saved your, um, your STE file, and you'll see here it is, Warren Miller 2. Dot STE, and I'll just click open, and here it is. And when I go back to it now, when I go to edit it, you'll see it has all of that information that I put in there, so I don't have to worry about remembering passwords and stuff. I'm sure most of you, I mean, when you have passwords for banks and you have passwords for this and passwords for that, it gets confusing after a while. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover today. And it, in doing this is jumping ahead a little bit, but it doesn't hurt to get started with it so that we have your, our tripod account. If you have an account with Roadrunner or TacBell or AT&T or something, you're going to have to contact them. Go to their website and find out you know what they're if they do allow if they do give you space for a website and if they do um, what would your URL be for example um, let me show you something here I know I'm going off on tangents now because I want to talk about this for a moment and I want to talk about GoDaddy for a moment and then we'll talk about best practices in web design we'll see how far we get today but because these are related to one another. Um, I purchased a domain name from, from GoDaddy. I have a couple of them. So when I type in kmart66.com, it takes you to my website. But actually, my web pages are, are, are stored on several different servers. Okay. If I want to go directly to the, the folder on the Earthlink server, the one that you know, if the, they as a host have given me, it does. It's like Tripod. It does not have a www in front of it. <coughs> so don't think that it that, you know will for whatever account you have. It it isn't. You have to purchase that. It's it's not something that just rolls off your tongue. This is the Tripod is simple compared to what this is. This would be home. Dot Earthlink. Dot net slash tilde or tilde Kmart 66. That's it. Now watch. I go there and it goes back to my old website. This I've updated it since. I don't no longer have this here. I have it on another page. 
and I have all of this stored on another server, but as you can see, this is the old one. Okay. So whoever your host is, this is typically what it would be. So that leads us to if you really, you know, when you're done with this, and the, the advantage to this is, though, is that you'll notice I don't have banner ads at the top and the bottom. And with Tripod, you will. That's the, the price you pay for having something for free. Okay. So, but if you can do it with your provider, that would be a better way to go. So at least you have this. And then through GoDaddy, if you purchase a, a, dona a domain name, so let me go back here for a minute. Well, let me just put in a new here. Let me Let's go to GoDaddy.com. They also provide web hosting and all sorts of things. But if you just want to buy a domain name, I don't know wh where they get the $2 names. But for under $10 a year, you can buy a .com. And it is registered. And then what they will provide as a part of that surface service is, is um, forwarding and masking. So you go into your account. So I would put in my account here, and my password. And I go into it, and I would look at my my account name, and it would be kmart66.com. And I want to take the, the URL of the server, my one that I have with Earthlink, which was the HTTP colon slash slash home.earthlink.net slash tilde kmart66. And I can put that in there. And what it will do is anytime someone puts in kmart66.com, it goes to GoDaddy, and it forwards it to my, my Earthlink account. Does that make sense? So it's not going directly to my thing. And it's a cheaper way to go. Uh -huh. So they don't have to type all that stuff in. Right, so they don't have to type in all that gobbledygook. So when you put in Kmart 66 or Kmart kmiller.com, it's not going to GoDaddy. It's not going to anything. It's just. I have Apple, I use Apple accounts, I use my Earthlink server, I've got them all over the place. I have a type for my, my blog, I have a, a type pad account so that there's stuff there. Um, it's just all over the place. But you'll never know that because then they also provide masking. Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's not so good. If you want to protect your website, because just about everything can be stripped off of a website. and for myself, I really don't care. And I'm not going to get into the copyright issues again today, but you got the idea. Mm -hmm. So if I put in kmart66.com, or if I go back here, <coughs> and um, let me just put kmart. Yeah, let's, re let's revisit this here. So this is what you get. And this goes to my TypePad account. These links go to my Earthlink account, which is files are now saved on my Apple server. I have so many websites that, I'm, that I potentially could manage that they're just all over the place. Anyway, if I go to view and I look at view source, you don't see the paid source, do you? It's masked, and GoDaddy masks, masks this. So there's nothing to download, nothing to, to copy. On the other hand, if I were to put in another website, let's go to Apple's website. Let's close this. And now let's also go to View. And let's look at View Page Source. I can copy all of this. This is all the source for that page. This is the HTML. This is, they're using anything else. PHP, JSP, ASP, all those 
fun thing. And I can copy all of this and I can paste it in a page in Dreamweaver and I can see how that page is structured. There are some also, there's some useful tools that I would like to try to cover later that are available for Firefox. Does anybody use Firefox at home? Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I would rec I highly recommend that you download a free copy of that browser at home. It's for Mac or PC. And there are some really good plugins, and one is um, for web design that will allow you, and I would put it here, but it goes away. So I will try again. But to look at the code, to analyze it, to turn images on and off, to do all sorts of things with other people's websites. What's the name of it? The extension you were talking about? The, the browser? No, you said there Firefox? was an add-on? Um, hold on. Let me look on my personal computer real quick here. Um, you know what? Let's just go there. <coughs> well, let's do. Well, let me do this. Let me go to Kmart 66. I didn't want to go to that one. Let's go back to Kmart66.com and see if I put it in here for helpful links. And let's go to Kirk's classes. Let's go to handouts. Um, Firefox add-ons. So I'm going to click here and see where that takes me. Um, now I've got to remember it myself. Let's go down here. Mini map. They've got tons of them. I wanted web. Shoot. Web monkey, no. Categories, let's start with categories. How about um, web development? Let's look here. It should be this one, web developer, under web development. Let me try to load it here. I mean, I don't have, let's, um, and again, it's a Firefox add-on, and I'm open in Safari, so it wouldn't help me with Safari. You know, and it's not available for Internet Explorer or any of the others. Fire, Firefox is probably, for most geeks, the, Browser of choice. Stability. Flexibility, stability, um, quickness. quickness of to download. It's written more efficiently and eff effectively to download pages quicker than others. It's um, more compatible with um, JavaScript and other other things than you may have noticed. Sometimes, if you're using Internet Explorer. It fails to open a page or something, or something that's wrong. It's because it's incompatible. Firefox is generally all around a good thing. And it won't screw up your computer at home. On another day, we'll do the web developer, and I'll show you. And it will be helpful. But if you want to, make note of it. So that's yeah. Firefox add-ons web developer tools, and it would be that web developer. And there's this little stream of tools at the top of your browser that for web design can be very helpful, very helpful. For example, when you go to a, a, um, someone else's page and you want to see if they've used cascading style sheets, you want to turn it off to see what the content is. Or if you want to see what their cascading style sheets are, you can actually copy all of that code. For some people, um, if you are blind, there's no point in having images visible. So you can turn off images. And your pages will load much quicker. And 
be much more efficient and your reader that will read the pages to you will work better. So you can do that. So there's a lot of things that you can do that will be helpful. Okay. <clears throat> but we will get to some other things here too. There's, we've already talked about Flash Kit. How many people have used Flash Kit for their projects? It, it takes a bit of hunting, but there are some things that you can retrieve later on when you're in the dark and you say, gee, I'm not quite sure how to do that. I've seen that, like the scrolling menus and stuff. That can, as far as I don't know how to do it in three. You have to do it in ActionScript 1 or 2. But you can find some there that you can download and you can look at the, how they're built, <coughs> deconstruct them, and reconstruct your own, just as we did with our slideshow. And that's why they're there. People are allowing you to do that. Firefox add-ons. And then later we will go to Juicy Studio, BizCheck, and the W3C. Um, I'll talk about W3C a little bit today, about best practices. Um, the same with BizCheck and, and Juicy Studio. Um, it's all about reaching as wide an audience as possible or being able to target a specific audience and make sure that they get what you want them to get. Does that make sense? When you hand somebody a printed document, you know what they're getting. Unfortunately, with web design, you don't know what they are getting because there are different computers, there are different browsers, there are different versions of browsers, there are different monitors, there are different operating systems, there are different, different, different. I mean, I know I'm forgetting something, but you get the picture. And all of those intertwined or combined with one another make it difficult to make sure that everybody gets the same thing, and that's what you want. Okay. Um, we can revisit some of these later. But what I want to do is jump to best practices so that <clears throat> what we're talking about today are general design principles. And it doesn't matter what platform you're, you're working on. Um, now, if I can find it, I know that I had it here. It should be a PDF file. Why don't I see it? Could it be under here, documents? There it is, okay. So this is a PDF file that you're welcome to download. Um, it was a webinar that I attended with the Multimedia and Entertainment Initiative. It's um, a part of the community college system and it's to help us, it, it was a part of getting you those discounts for Adobe software and things like that. Um, because of budget, budget cutbacks in recent years, we don't go to these um, conferences much anymore. We just do these webinars. And I don't know whether this is legal or not, but I figure I'm giving everybody credit and I'm sharing it with you. I'm not publishing it. Um, I hope everything is copacetic, that um, there's no big copyrights on this. So. <coughs> but anyway, this um, webinar was given by principally by Bill Culifer, and he is the executive director of the World Organization of Webmasters. <coughs> um, I'm not sure who Jeff Coe is, and I have met John Avakian quite a bit. He's the director of the Multimedia Entertainment Initiative um, through all of the 110 community colleges, so it was the three of them combined. And so I took the slideshow after World, and I'm going to go ahead and, <coughs> and present this to you the best I can. And it covers many of the principles that I talk about anyway. But just to let you know that the WOW or the Web Organization of Webmasters is 10 years old. And um, <coughs> it's basically designed to help you organize, you know, and create and manage and market websites. That's all. And do it efficiently and effectively so that everybody gets um, a a positive experience when they see it. And if you're interested in seeing um, and going and, and looking at anything that they have, you know, up to the minute news that they have posted, you can go to www.wowtechminute.com. 
<coughs> for editorials, news, all sorts of stuff. And again, best, best practices. Because those do change. Again, repeat, the, what makes it, um, web design different from print is that once it's in print, that you can have it for hundreds of years and it stays the same. The paper may age and yellow and tear, but it's fundamentally the same. And with web design, it's ongoing. <coughs> so one of the things that I would like you to think of when you're doing your website, and I really uh, uh, attempt when we're designing this to to build a basic shell, something that's really fundamentally, that clearly works, that at least it's uploaded and it's visible and you didn't get no um, broken links or anything like that. At least all the content is there and it's organized in a, in a, in a, in a neat, tidy way for um, readability. And then as you feel more comfortable with web design, and you wish to embellish it and make your design richer and more, I think, uh, refined, then you can begin to revise each of the pages and build and upload those and change it. So it's, web design is more organic in that regard. It's ongoing. It's web design, as I was told, it's just it's never done. You know, at constant, you're, you, know, you go back to web websites that you're very familiar with. You go back day to day, and suddenly, boom, there's a change. Suddenly, there's a change. Certainly, news organizations and things like that, but even personal web pages. Sometimes they don't change much. Sometimes they do, but they're ongoing. So that's how I, I would like you to think of yours. <coughs> First thing that you always have to think about, and we'll go over these point by point, and I will try to embellish on each of these. <coughs> And uh, not only are they good practices for the web, but um, when we talked about some of what we were doing for Flash, is that first you have to appeal to a target audience. You need to know who your audience is. And that's, for many people, difficult. Sometimes it's easy. If I was in the business of selling widgets, selling something, you know, toys, little tchotchkes or something. <coughs> um, I was in the import-export business and I wanted to have things that I sold and it was constantly changing for the holidays or something. I would want, and, and it was important that I reach the widest audience, audience possible, that they, everybody who has access to a website could get to mine and download it quickly then I would probably have a very simple approach. I would probably not include much flash. I would probably not include big images. I would probably use a smaller framework and size for our web page because maybe they have a tiny monitor. Okay, Maybe they have a slow baud rate in their connection to the internet. Maybe they are still on dial-up. Anybody still here still on dial-up? There's usually one person, and I don't mean to isolate you, and <laughs> but let's make fun of that person. Is there somebody <laughs> here? That we, no, no, no. There's always one, per, but you know, still the the for most people, and at least in the United States, I don't I, probably the world, uh, definitely the world, but I think even in the United States, it's um, dial-up is still more common than having DSL or cable modem. And um, it's 56K, it's technically 56.6K kilobytes or kilobits per second is the download rate. That's slow by today's standards. So <coughs> since in this class we're trying to make everything graphically rich, that takes time to download. So you might want to pare that down, minimize it, make sure that when you save images for the web, that you are as efficient as possible so that they are download quickly, okay? On the other hand, that's, that's if I'm selling little tchotchkes, I'm in the import-export business and I want to reach a broad audience as possible. If I'm a photographer and my goal is to reach art directors, it's nice if other people see my artwork, but I really don't care. They're not the ones paying my bills. 
you know, I, 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 I mean, you might have multiple websites for that, that matter. <coughs> so I know that most art directors, or all of them that I'm interested in, probably have large monitors. That they have one, you know, large ones like this or bigger. You know, maybe have one of those beautiful Apple 30-inch monitors or somebody, you know, really nice big ones. And they probably all have access to T1 connections. So, you know, set, let alone, you know, cable, modem, or DSL, they have fast connections. So I'm going to pull out all the stops. I want to make sure that my photographs are large, my web page is big, maybe 1024 by 768 or larger, so that they have as visually rich experience as possible. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But you do that for someone who has a 56K modem, and they're going to be scrolling left and right, top and bottom. It's going to take forever to download one image for them to see it. It's going to be a horrible experience for them. They're going to be gone within a few seconds. Most people only stay on a web page at the most for a couple of minutes, at the very most. So to grab people's attention, you have to know or understand the audience you're trying to target. <coughs> I mean, for this class, everybody will be happy just to make sure everything works. You know, but when, you, you know, when you're doing it professionally, you, have to, you really have to think about that to be effective because there are millions and millions of web pages that you have to compete with. Okay. And it functions in many respects kind of like billboard advertising or advertising in magazines. That it has to grab the viewer's attention almost in instantaneously within a second or two. If it doesn't, they're gone. And with billboard advertising, that's definitely the case because they literally are gone. Their car is past the billboard and they don't remember it. In advertising in magazines, you tend to flip through them, right? You know, you're sitting in the doctor's office, waiting, 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 and you're going through all the magazines and you're flipping through them. And occasionally there may be an ad that just jumps out at you. And you don't know why, it just grabs you. And if that occurs, you have succeeded. You have slowed the viewer down to at least pause and look at you for a few more seconds than the other, the other ads. Okay. Now, on the other hand, if you have or established, and there is something that someone wants to get from your website that someone absolutely needs, they're willing to be more patient, and they are. You know, if they've already come there once and they've come again and they have to go to your website. Like, if you go to my website for this week in class, I hope it's a fairly easy experience for you. But you have to, to get every week the information, you have to go there. It's a little bit different. You're willing to wade through a few more things than the average person. And that would be true if you're going to Amazon.com, if you're going to a news organization where you're hunting for maybe a specific article. Um, things like that. That's different. But for right now, you want to capture as many people as you can. So appeal to your target audience. To do so, <coughs> to help to fac facilitate that, and we talked about this with Flash, to do your slideshow is that you want consistency from page to page. You want to make sure that when people <coughs> When the, when the end user um, goes to your website and they click to another page, that the header remains the same, whatever is along the top, so that when I'm going forwards or I'm going backwards <coughs> here, all of that, with the exception of the title, remains the same. So you know I'm there. I'm at the same website. Because one thing that, that people do often is that they have links on their website to external pages. And when you click on that link, thinking that that's where you want to go, it actually takes you someplace else. And before you know it, you're clicking, 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 and you go, well, you know, you're, you're Alice, it's Alice in Wonderland. You've gone down the rabbit hole, and you don't, where am I now? I meant to be back here, and you're away on somebody else's website. 
there are some basic rules that, that I have for that to avoid that situation. But by having consistency <coughs> so that people don't have to hunt around for links, so that people have a clear visual to know that they are on your website, just like newspaper, magazine, you know that it's consistent. Consistent colors, consistent type, consistent position, consistent, 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 unless, again, your target audience is somebody unique and you want it different for a very specific reason. But again, it has to be specific, not because, because I think it's cool. I think it looks neat. Because it will confuse the end user. Okay. As I just mentioned too, consistency in navigation. Don't put your, your navigation buttons. Uh, okay. So that on this website here, they're all at the top. They're not on the top on one place, and they're on the left on another, and on the right on another page, or at the bottom on another page. You know, um, because maybe you, th you thought, well, I didn't have room, or it didn't work on this page or that. Then you need to redesign your page so that there's consistency. It goes back to the dial. Th I mean, the analogy that I use: the the, the dials. <coughs> or the settings on a radio or a television. They don't change. They're permanent. <coughs> Wherever they are, and you can put them on the left, the top, the right, and you can have text links at the bottom. Wherever you put them is fine, it, but they should be readable, easy to, um, to see, and the same place every page because wherever it is on the first page, there is an expectation when they go to the next page that it's in the same place. And if it's not, again, it, it, it's just enough to slow people down to cause problems. Um, let's see. Um, your first page should be the most informative, which should include your, your name or your company name or whatever, site name, all that, that information. Um, it should also be anything that's important regarding copyrights, um, anything pertinent should clearly be visible on that first page. And related to that is the, the scrolling and the page size, and that's the size that we're going to work on in this, in, in this um, class. The default page size for us will be 800 by 600 pixels. That's not a very big page size. It's horizontal too. So web design is horizontal, not vertical like print. <coughs> so your navigation, your masthead, your, your, your information about your company, copyrights, all those sorts of things should fit within that 800 by 600 format. Um, you sh on your first page, the end user should not have to scroll up and down, definitely not left and right. Okay. Now, if they have to scroll just a little bit, no, okay. But you get the picture. On second, third, you know, any subsequent page, if they have to scroll a lot vertically, no big deal. Which also leads to scrolling itself. The reason, under any circumstances, I would say do not make it any wide your page any wider than 800 pixels is because <coughs> um, many people. I would assume most of you have at least 17-inch monitors at home. Anybody have anything smaller? No. Anybody have 20-inch monitors at home? Some people, any larger, yeah. But a lot of people now are switching to laptops as their workhorse. And even if you have a 17-inch laptop, most of them are around or 15 inches diagonal. So the including the um, the browser. <coughs> Um, links and all that sort of thing at the top, and if you have to the left your history or whatever, you have all of that and your web page. The fit on a 15-inch monitor, 800 pixels wide, is 
is pretty good. Any greater than that, and unfortunately, the end user is going to have to scroll left and right to see everything. And if you have your, your navigation on the left or the right, they're going to have to scroll to get to it. That's not good. That, um, having said that, but also that aside, for whatever reason, if somebody knows the answer to this, tell me again. It, I, I can only tell you that it is, and I, it is a fact, is that people don't like to scroll left and right. We don't mind scrolling up and down, but we don't like scrolling left and right. So that you definitely want to eliminate. No scrolling left and right. Huh? It's also yeah, I don't, I don't know why that, why is it okay up and down and not left and right? I don't know why it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes good sense. I knew it must be something that made sense, but. But I mean, that's as good as any, but I just know that that is a fact and it's something you really need to pay attention to when you're designing. And if you notice, when you preview it in a browser, um, that's one thing that we'll talk about from, ta from time to time, is that um, when you test it and you view your page in a browser, um, the best way to test these things, and I'm probably getting ahead a little bit, but um, you're going to want to test it on different browsers to make sure that it looks pretty much the same from browser to browser. Um, you're going to want to test it on different platforms, on a Mac and the PC, to make sure that they look pretty much the same. Um, test, test, test is what everybody should be doing. And I, I'm, I'm not as good about that myself as I should be, but you really should. Not only that, but on older browsers, what does it look like? What is, you know, how backwards compatible are we making these? You begin to see all the variables involved that can make this either a very pleasant experience or an awkward one. <coughs> I think like any good design, you want to balance the graphics with the images and the white space so that it, your, your pages are easily read by the end user. If they're too heavy in text, it is really hard for most people to read a lot of text on a monitor. So you might want to break it up into smaller pieces. Likewise, I mean, it, it really depends on what kind of website you have. If, again, if you're a photographer, you might dedicate a flash project for your portfolio, but any place else, minimize the number of images because it's going to take a long time to download them if you have them on every page. Don't have huge images on every page. It just it will be overwhelming. Try to create a balance between that. And make sure that you have enough white space. White space is good. What that does is it provides a, um, a, re a, a buffer for you, the person when they're looking at it to a relief. You know, to, to look around the text and the eyes, it gives them some relief so they aren't f focused on all of it. And, but remember, you know, I mean, when you go to Amazon.com's website or most news organizations, they're just crammed packed with all kinds of garbage. But you're there for a purpose, and that's why you're willing to wade through all of that. I'm there to get a book. I'm there to buy a CD. I'm there to buy whatever. And so, I mean, what I do is I look for the search at the top and type it in and find what I need and then move from there. But my eye doesn't, you know, I don't sit and look at all the other stuff. I guess some people do. I'm told that some people, you know, when you have, um, when you go to your, your uh, a home page and they have ads with flashing things, it says click here. They have one of those compulsive, you know, disorders, I guess, that they feel they have to click, you know, so they, it, I guess it is effective for some people. Contrast. And this is a good, these are good design elements. You want good contrast between the text and the background. How often have I seen a black background with red text or dark blue text or something like that? That's where Juicy Studios and the, some of these other websites will be helpful because what you can do is you can type in the hexadecimal number and it, of your background and your type, and it will tell you if there's adequate contrast or if you're borderline or if there isn't enough. Um, really what you want to do is you want to strip away the hue and just be concerned with the degree of lightness or darkness, and then that will 
let you know whether you have enough contrast. Red, by the way, is very close. It's a, a dark gray if you were to strip away the red. The same with dark greens. Um, they're very close to a dark gray, so there isn't much contrast between that and black, and it makes it almost unreadable. Um, to show you what happens when you just go to black and white is take a, a red and white document and make a photocopy of it, and it will all go black. So if it does that, it will be very hard for people to read. So maintain good contrast. And that's just good design anyway. Good contrast, good between light and dark. I push that when I used to teach drawing and illustration. It just makes it pop off the page. If there isn't much contrast, it all kind of blends together and blurs, and it makes it difficult to read. <coughs> Um, good information here, the repetitive information, meaning your header and logo and that sort of thing, shouldn't take up any more than a quarter or a third of the browser window because it doesn't leave much space for the rest. And that's not a lot of space. Okay. Um, a lot of this is uh, not everything, it's, it's, it's obvious, but um, you want your home page to be compelling. It should say in an instant what it is you're about. I don't think I need to say any more about that. That's pretty obvious. But this is, I think, will be new information for you. Is that your home page and just your home page, home page should download within 10 seconds with a 56K modem. Should. And again, if you're a photographer, it's a non-issue. If it's for the broad audience, then that's definitely true. And when we get, we, when we open Dreamweaver, just as when we save for web and Photoshop, it tells us with a 56K modem you know, connection, how many seconds it will take for each of those images to download. In Dreamweaver, it has a very nice feature in the lower right-hand corner. So when we get to designing pages there, it will show you, it will say that you know, based on the current content of your page and this connection speed, it's going to take X number of seconds to download. So you can be aware of that. So there's a lot of number crunching when you're doing this, unfortunately. <coughs> um, the next I briefly mentioned, but it, it bears repeating, is browser compatibility. Um, you want to make sure that it displays properly on version, at least versions of 6 and 7 on Internet Explorer, um, current versions of Netscape, although Netscape has go gone away, um, Firefox, which is Mozilla, Opera, and Safari. Those are the main browsers. I th still think the biggest one is Explorer because that comes with PCs. And then I think next to that is Firefox. And then probably all the rest. Safari is a very small chunk. And Opera and stuff. But there are, um, Opera is very good. Safari is very good. Firefox is excellent. Netscape I wouldn't worry about anymore. And Explorer I think is a piece of junk. I think it was excellent at one time, but they've kind of fallen behind. They have not made the, rev the revisions necessary to, s to make it compatible with a lot of things that are going on in the Internet right now. Okay. How am I doing on time? Hold on a second. Because <coughs> it's 9.30. Do you want to take a break? Okay. Let's take a break. <coughs> 